I have a question about the relationship between consciousness and the body and the translation of consciousness through the body and what you just said about the vibration of happy coming from the solar plexus and then flowering out, something like that. I've also heard you talk about thought as vibration. I'm curious and a little confused about what comes, f not so much what comes first, but the relationship between the creation of vibration between my body and my consciousness. Does that make sense? Yes. First, we want to say that there is a vibration that gathers enough momentum that it becomes thought. And at the point that it becomes thought, and let's call that thought a manifestation because it was vibration and now it's thought. Now it's something recognizable by your consciousness. So when that thought occurs, then the emotional response comes because there's already a thought. Your inner being, your inner being is vibration that is projecting in such a powerful way that if you, could, if you could read the vibration, if you could translate the vibration, Esther's getting these vibrations at an unconscious level and translating them into full-blown sentences. And so there is a very powerful thought vibration that is a very large manifestation, in the, in the, not in the background, in the foreground, but happening simultaneously with the thought that is now occurring to you. So once that thought occurs to you, now you have a vibrational relationship between the thought that occurred to you and the thought that your inner being is thinking about the same thing in the same time. And that's what equals emotion. So the way we have always said that simply is that the thought comes first and then the emotion responds to the thought. We just explained to you more fully why that is. So every cell of your body, trillions of them, transmitting and receiving mechanism consciousness offering vibrations now from a human standpoint you wouldn't think those vibrations are really thoughts because you're not picking up on them not really your inner being is though remember your inner beings over here with all this vibration going on so your inner being has this wonderful communication going on with the fullness of your physical apparatus all the time all the time now when you're happy all your circuits are open. You're allowing that conversation to go on. Now, it's not a conversation that you want to be in on necessarily. You don't want to talk about food digesting and blood pumping. And, and in other words, you don't need to have all of that information. You don't even really want to have all of that information. Esther's offering it in very rudimentary fashion here. In other words, there is so much communication between the cells of your body and this source energy that... that if, if you could take one day of it, you wouldn't have enough time in this life just to, to decipher it and fully understand it. We're just saying to you, it's happening. So as it happens, as you're happy, as you're plugged in, then your circuits are all wide open, you're allowing the full communication, and off you go. You know how when you feel thirsty? Again. Thirsty. That's a manifestation that happens within you as a result of the conversation between your inner being and the cells of your body. You know how when you yawn and can't suppress it, that's you translating into a manifestation the request that the cells have put in for more oxygen in this moment to feed these cells of your body. In other words, you are often, without even knowing it, cooperating with the conversation between this source energy and your cells. So now, you were very articulate in your opening words to us. Can you go back and find them again? When you speak <clears throat> or spoke about happiness emanating from the solar plexus and flowering out... Well, what we, mean, what we meant by that is your solar plexus are just... In the same way that your ears hear 
and that your eyes see. Your eyes translate vibration and that's why you see. And your ears translate vibration and that's why you hear. And your tongue tra translates vibration and that's why you taste. Your solar plexus translates vibration and that's why you feel emotion. So, so, that's why we, we wanted to call it. And maybe for the first time ever, we wanted to call that emotion a manifestation. It's the manifestation of, and, and, and now you know it, it's your conscious recognition of your viewpoint juxtapose your inner being's viewpoint uh -huh. oh, matters so much. When you talk about focusing on only being happy, my experience of being happy is a very embodied experience. Yeah. And the expansion that I'm feeling is a very, it feels like a lot of... You know why? Because you're, because when your circuits are wide open and your inner being is flowing through you, in other words, that's consciousness experiencing life with you. Mm. That's, that's your inner being experiencing life with you. Now we want you to know your inner being is always doing that. Sometimes you're just aware of it. And that's what those moments are. That's you in on how we feel about you. And in that moment, in that moment. And when I've... <laughs> when I feel that, that's enough. That I, I, I... Well, it is everything because that here, here you are, just like you planned, living life just like you intended, sorting and sifting and, and defining and deciding, and now in this state of allowing, and everything that you are is reveling in the perfection of you right here on the leading edge, being, doing, having just what you intended. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the response of the body to trauma is so fast that I find that the body is in a state of shock. Smart body. <laughs> Smart cells. And at that point, the brain... Consciousness. Consciousness. I, my experience is that there's a part of consciousness that is not... I'm, I am unable to access. Well, you see, the reason you said your brain is because your brain's translating that consciousness. Hmm. We interrupted you, start again, because what you're about to say matters a lot. The body has a response and the part of my consciousness, brain, is I'm, it's like I go into shock and I'm unable to talk my body out of that shock. It, it, it's like I can't, at that moment of being in shock to some kind of... Well, just do your best to relax. Just do your, just, rather, than, rather than try to make something happen or talk your body out of it, just do your best to relax because sometimes Esther will lie in her bed and maybe she has a level of stress or a, a level of, of uh, wanting to be asleep when she's awake or so, something that's going on and she can feel that she's just a little bit out of balance and she can feel the tension of it. And so she will ask us, will you just do whatever you can do to to help me to let go of this tension that I've got going on and and in some ways it's it's asking for a shortcut to something but yeah. her desire is strong enough and in that state of allowance and trust then anytime you ask for anything in a state of allowance and trust then it comes any time you ask for anything, no matter what it is, in a state of allowance and trust, it begins in that moment. And Esther can feel, it feels like someone has hands inside of her head manipulating her scalp. And she always just kind of smiles and thinks how uh, 30 years ago that would have really freaked her out. Because it, it, who does that? And who, who has that feeling? She can actually, it feels to her like her head is moving all around on the pillow, even though she's in a state of complete and utter relaxation. Because she is allowing the, the knowledgeable, loving, non-physical agents of her being to, to, she uses the word tweak, can you just tweak me back into alignment? And she always, or nearly always, then falls into a restful sleep about it. So, this 
ties into the first words that you were asking what's the connection what's the connection between your physical body and this consciousness and so we're wanting you to know that there is there are no limits to this non-physical consciousness that is your inner being and every conceivable aspect of your physical body and that in understanding who that is and what's going on and what the intent is and what the love is and what the knowledge is and what the value is what the fullness is what the knowing is that's the most important thing and then when you apply to that your relaxed and utter trust and willingness to allow the full integration of you and your non-physical right here and now it just doesn't get any better in physical than that you see we like to talk to you about this receptive mode as being the replenishing mode the replenishing mode and that's always what's being offered you are always being offered replenishment no matter what so that feeling of shock you have is because replenishment is flowing to you steadily as it always does but something's happened that's caused you to abruptly stop the flow so it's almost like being electrocuted for a minute in other words the flow's there but you've closed the circuit sort yes. of like Boom, what Esther did with the microphone yeah so that's what we're talking about I stopped trusting yeah yeah so any any time you don't feel good just say to yourself I must not be trusting the way I'm capable of doing we're having this conversation specifically with you because we can feel the level of trusting integration that you have between your body and your consciousness and there, there is so much delight for you to experience in all of that yeah, really yeah. Thank you so much. Enough.